Good morning. My name is Jesse, and I will be sharing your word for the day. Today we'll be reading Psalm 38, and it's David asking God to remember him. He's carrying a heavy burden of guilt from his sin and needs God's help. So let's read Psalm 38. It says, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath, for your arrows have sunk into me, and your hands have come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate all day I go about mourning. For my sides are filled with burning and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. Let's continue down to 15. It says, But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. For I said, Only let them not rejoice over me who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever before me. I confess my iniquity. I'm sorry for my sin. But my foes are vigorous. They are mighty. And many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good accuse me because I follow after good. Do not not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Did you hear in David's song his cry of pain and guilt? He was probably also dealing with shame. I do like how open and honest David is with God. You can feel his pain as he pours out his heart. Are you currently dealing with the weight and burden of a sin? Or do you remember a time when you felt the weight of your sin? I know I have. It can feel like a heavy burden, too heavy to bear, and I need God's help. I don't like that feeling or heaviness, but I've grown to understand its importance. It's taught me the purpose of confession obedience, and dependence on God, and how to listen to the Holy Spirit. As I know if I continued sinning, it was not willing to change, it would lead to a path of destruction and pain, and eventually affecting the ones I love. Sin is like a life sucker and a peace taker. Sin is like poison in our body that we carry around while it slowly causes death. Jesus is our only hope, and thankfully, Jesus has taken the weight of sin and death for us so that we can be forgiven, redeemed, and given a purpose and a redemptive story of God's power and love. So let's talk about practical things we can do. One is we can confess our sin to God and ask Him to help us and to take away that desire. We can spend time with God daily and study His Word because His Word transforms our life. We can spend time listening after reading scripture and write down any thoughts or anything that we're hearing from God and have people in our life that will speak truth and love and help with accountability. Worship God daily, thanking him for what he's done and is doing and is going to do. So are you ready to confess and lay down something that you've been holding on to and maybe afraid to let go? If you confess your sin and burden to Jesus, He will bring you forgiveness, healing, and freedom. Lay it at the feet of Jesus and completely surrender to Him. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That is good news. Some other things that we can do uh, to help are join uh, a 12-step, attend CR, a life group, call someone you trust to help you with accountability. When we are open and transparent, then it's not in the dark and hidden. Eventually it comes to the light, so it's better to deal with it now before it causes more damage. And if you are dealing with the wreckage of sin, know that there is hope because Jesus is the healer, redeemer, and forgiver. I love when God redeems our lives and uses it for good. I'm so grateful that Jesus has died on the cross for our sins. So let's thank God every day, worshiping Him daily with our life, because I know He will give us joy, peace, comfort, 
rest, hope, and he'll fill us with his unending, relentless love. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a great week.